Well, we've got an exciting day today. I've been invited to the 44 Teeth Adventure Bike Group Test just outside uh, JHS Racing. Bikes are lined up. We've got the Super Adventure, the KTM, the Staple, the BMW R1250 GS, the new Multi V4 and the brand new Triumph Tiger 1200. And uh, I'm going to be starting on this old girl. Not ridden one, first time on it. Um, this is the Explorer version, I think with a 30 litre fuel tank, should be a good day. We've got an overnight, we're going to the Three Cocks, <laughs> which is in Wales, and uh, we've got an overnighter, and I'm uh, with the 44 Teeth Boys, so I'm quite excited, I'm a little fanboy. See you after the intro. I'm starting on the Tiger. We've just done about half hour, 40 minutes, mainly on the motorway, sort of getting here. First impressions of the Tiger, it's very nice. This is the GT Explorer. So this has the 30 litre tank and we've just filled them up. So it's carrying, you know, 30 litres of fuel, which is obviously a considerable amount of weight. I know this bike is technically lighter than the, the BMW, let's say, you know, the equivalent BMW by about 15 kilos. But because the weight is higher up, you know, on the BMW you've got that boxer engine with the engine weight very low, it does feel a little bit heavier than I would say the BMW. But let's wait until we got on the BMW before we start throwing out such conclusions. All of the menu system is the same as the, the, the Speed RS, the Speed RR, you know, it's that new interface, identical. Um, only criticism, slight criticism, on an adventure bike, you know, it's very sparse, that main display on this. You know, it doesn't tell you anything, you know, which is fine on, I guess, a Super Naked, but on an adventure bike, I want to know what my trip is, I want to know what my fuel range is. I want a bit more information permanently displayed on the screen than what you get. And I've been through some of the modes, and I think you can go through different options, like look at what you've got fuel, but it's not all on the screen at once. And I think that could be a little bit of a mistake. The Tiger's also got the new radar detection on the rear so you've got the blind spot detection but it doesn't have that at the front so it doesn't have adaptive cruise control it just has the uh, the regular cruise control it works very well just had it on the on the motorway <laughs> it's a double press you know bang bang cruise controls on there's no faffing it's very a very good system but not adaptive and adaptive isn't an option which is it i'm surprised they didn't put adaptive on it i'm a bit of a convert for adaptive but there we go it is what it is oh listen to that <laughs> i love that sound when it's under load the engine the engine's really compliant you know, it's got plenty, even sort of this third gear, 2,000 revs. Plenty of drive there, doesn't rattle your teeth out. It's very smooth, being a triple, there's not too much vibration through the bars. There's a little bit of vibes, but not too bad. You know, it's that T-plane crank again. I think we're stopping here. Well, it's guaranteed not to actually rain now. You've struggled with that, isn't it? So that's, that's nice work, mate. Good, good job. You've, sa you've saved us getting wet. I feel like a rebel now, just in a pair of jeans, mate. Jeez, risk taker. So a quick walk around of the new Tiger. So main features of this bike is of course, shaft drive she now has shaft well always did have shaft drive but it's one, only one or two bikes here with, with shaft drive the other being the bmw heated rear pillion seat on the gt pro and i see a power outlet as well that's quite nice front end of the bike i'm not a massive fan of this new headlight i do think the one on the tiger 900 looks a little bit more sexy but I do quite like this sort of large running light it has at the bottom. Stylema calipers, as on all Tigers, and that unmistakable Tiger front end, that beak. The radiator's actually right up in there, look, right out the way in the side of the fairing there. That's quite strange, isn't it? So you've got no radiator exposed at the front here. That sound good. 
the Triumph, I've been riding it for probably two hours now, maybe a little bit longer. It's it's very comfortable. The riding position is you're not cantered forward. You're, you're sat very upright. You've got all you've got all the weight on your bum, but you're very upright. You're not leaning forward. There's no weight on your wrists. The seat on the Tiger is actually particularly good. This one on the GT Pro, GT Explorer. This one has electric seat. I haven't tried that because it's not cold enough, but. When I rode the Ducati, it had a very thin seat, so, so you, you know, so smaller riders can get their legs down. It was very thin at the front, and with my more ample bottom, I, I was, it's putting a lot of weight on a small area of your bum. Well, this has got a pretty nice, big, comfortable, thick seat, and uh, my body is in perfect cosseted comfort. Cosseted comfort on the Triumph. <laughs> you dirty. It's good to see the onesie of shame kept the rain away mostly, so well done that man. Who wants to go and what next then? What's the, what's the order? What's the most thing we'd like I to try? The, the Super Adventure. Super Adventure. Uh, I'd like a ride on the BMW next. BMW. I'm, sure the Duke, I'm on the Super Duke. Super Duke, well, not Super Duke. Uh, yeah. The Super the Duke. Duke. Ducati. Super yeah. Ducati, that's the one. So you're on the uh, Tiger then now? Have you ridden that before, Al? Sorry? Have you ridden one of those before? No. Oh, exciting. And have you ridden the Super Adventure before, Chris? No? Huh? Have you ridden the new Super Adventure before? Oh, oh. Have you ridden a GS before, Boothie? Yeah. <laughs> a few times. Ooh, we're off on the Ducati. Thing with the Ducati straight away, I've noticed. Neutral is a bit of a pain. There we go, we've got it. You also got that thin seat I spoke about. It's getting on this straight away. There's not as much support for your bottom as what there is on that Tiger. But I do love this thing. All the bikes have a cubby hole for your key apart from the Triumph. There's no cubby hole to keep your keyless key on the Triumph. So, uh, you know, I think on this sort of bike you do really need a cubby hole. This bike's only got half a tank of fuel left in it. This has got a 22 litre fuel tank. The Triumph obviously had 30 litres. So you were packing, you know, a lot more fuel on the Triumph, but this thing is just so agile. And the thing with this bike, and I, I did it in my last video when I rode this, you don't have to give any lever input to change direction. You know, you can do it just with your, your body easily. It's much more nimble than that Triumph. The suspension feels a lot sportier, a lot firmer. It doesn't seem, it seems like it was longer travel, the suspension on the Triumph. This is much, I can just tell, you know, you've only been on it five minutes, but through these bends I can just tell this is much, this feels much nicer balance. The suspension gives more feedback. On the tech front, I think the Ducati is actually winning there as well, because you've got not only the blind spot detection, which I think works slightly better on this than it does on the Triumph. The Triumph seem to see cars a long way behind your blind spot. Whereas this is much more isolated to the actual blind spot area. I don't know if there's a way of adjusting that, but this definitely seems better out the box. And of course you've got the adaptive cruise control. And I know adaptive cruise control is not everyone's cup of tea. Look at the views. Wow. Look at that. But it works really. I love adaptive cruise control. Oh, look at the views as you come around the corners. That is gorgeous. Hey! The brakes are also fantastic on this. The Stylemas give so much feel. That, you, you could argue they're a little bit aggressive. Certainly if you're going to go off-road, perhaps they could be a little bit aggressive. But for road riding, for sports riding, phenomenal, phenomenon. I'm also a massive fan of this V4 motor in this uh, Multistrada. I'm not a massive fan of how much fuel it uses, I and mean, that is this bike's biggest Achille Achilles heel. If it wasn't for the fuel consumption, I think it would be the ultimate adventure bike. But because of that fuel consumption, I'm not sure it can win that crown. But what I do love about this engine is it is so smooth. 
it's less vibey well it's probably slight a tiny bit less vibey than what that triumph t-plane triple slightly miss but it, it's so drivable it's gorgeous the perfect amount of engine braking give us a wave mister Yeah, failed it. <laughs> <laughs> So let's do a very quick walk around while the guys are doing the flybys. V4S, Multistrada, beautiful thing. It's got some clever aero down here to direct cool air at the rider, which I mentioned before when I reviewed this bike. Other sort of key features with this is I think it's got... Worries. We're trying to do a walk around here, you buggers. Fantastic sat-nav integration on this as well, which is really good. Oh, here they come. So you can have, you know, your Sidejik app, and I think Google Android's coming soon, so you can have like your full Google Maps displayed over the screen. I think this is the only bike here you can do that on, and that's a great feature. Other features of the Ducati is the suspended rear panniers. They're back again. That's the, that's the V4 Multistrada in a nutshell. I think we've got an hour and a half until we arrive at the next stop. And that could be an hour and a half of roads like this. Oh, I love Wales. I love Wales. This bike's got two problems as far as I can, well, three problems. One, it drinks too much of that. And the other is this seat is just too thin at the front and it doesn't give enough support around the edges of your bottom, especially if you've got a big bottom like me. And let's be honest, people buying this bike are middle-aged with increasing waistlines and bottoms. I think it needs a little bit more support. And the seat does feel quite low if you're a bit taller. Apart from that, oh, and the third problem is, it's not mine. It's not the bike's feet. Gonna have a go on the super adventure. So I, I love the, love, love the Multistrada. Love it. I'm interested to see, I love the hooligan side of the Multi. I'm wondering if how the, how the super adventure compares from the, on the hooligan front to the, uh, to the Ducati. Because if I want an adventure bike, I know everyone doesn't, but I want a hooligan. The Triumph was, uh, I'd say it's a, it's a good blend of comfort. I haven't really pushed it in any corners yet, so I'm going to reserve judgment, but it's very comfortable, the Triumph, very uh, capable, but I really want to push it on and see how much of a hooligan it is. Al just got off it and he said he thought it was incredible, absolutely incredible through those twisties. So. We'll give it another whirl if we something a bit more. Now it's warmed up a bit and it's dried out a bit. We can push on a bit more. Throwing my leg over feels quite similar to the uh, Ducati actually. Feels a very similar position to the Ducati, I think. Let these boys through if I can at Chris Suit. I'll be tailing Charlie again. It feels, uh, it feels more raw. This is obviously the 1290 par parallel twin, a V-twin. This is the KTM 1290 V-twin. You know, like what's in the Super Duke, obviously retuned slightly in it. It's slightly less power in this. I think it's 140-ish horsepower in this. But compared to that Ducati, it's a little bit more vibey. Definitely more vibe through the seat. Definitely got more of a raw a raw feel to it actually. I'm quite surprised by that. A few more vibes through the handlebars as well. And the seat feels the same as a Ducati, a little bit thin maybe. And I know of course you can get the blooming comfort seats for all these bikes, but why don't they come with a, the most comfortable seat standard? Why do you have to pay extra on a more comfortable seat? Look at these roads. The pull when you open the throttle is similar 
to the uh, Ducati. Maybe this has got a, a bit more initial bite, a bit more initial punch than the Multistrada. Comfort, off-road, advanced, auto, sport. Sport, please. Right, sport suspension. Yeah, in the sport mode, feels similar to the uh, Multistrada. The feedback you're getting for the road. The brakes are sharp again. A little bit more vibration lower down the rev range. Doesn't pull quite so cleanly, but it feels agile. Feels it feels as agile as the Multistrada because of the ball bag fuel tank design with all the weight very low down. It's definitely got the agility, but it just feels a little bit more raw than the V4. But that, you know, not too raw. I could perfectly put up with this, but it's just because I've done a back to back. I've noticed it. Oh, look at the views. Ah, oh, look at the roads. It's maybe not quite as agile as the, the Multistrada. I think the Multistrada is perhaps a little bit more agile. I don't know how Ducati have done it, actually. Got so much agility out of that. And as I say, the seating position is very similar on this to the Multistrada. I feel, if I were to shut my eyes, I'm not going to, but if I were to shut my eyes, I'll be hard pushed to tell between them from the seating position. This is certainly masses of fun. I, I, you can come here, you can get to the twisties, you can exploit the bike and the roads, you know, to their potential without feeling like the bike's holding you back. This is very much, you know, a real sense of pleasure and enjoyment thrashing this round here. Super adventure, here she is. Key feature really of this bike is these big ball bag, low fuel tanks. You know, they, they keep the weight really low. It's a look which you sort of get used to, but I, in this color specifically, this sort of gunmetal color, I think it is great, here they come again. That huge, 1300cc V-twin motor. What a power plant that is. Seat height on the Aventure sort of intermediate, I'd say. It's okay comfort, but I'd, I'd have to get the power parts comfort seat, I reckon, just to improve the comfort a little bit. Nice big screen on the KTM, but you can't do the sat-nav integration, which is a little bit of a shame. Here, here comes the GS. You could do turn-by-turn -turn navigation, but you can't have that full TFT showing the full map. I think that's going to be the thing of the future. That a lot of bikes are going to be coming out with that. It doesn't have it at the moment. But there she is, the 1290 Super Adventure, and it certainly is super. Right, it's my turn on the BM wobble you. The GS is at a little bit as it won't speak. The GS is at a little bit of a disadvantage in this test because it's the bike we've loaded all the gear on. <laughs> it's got all the panniers attached to this, so it's got a lot of weight, all the camera equipment. The Multistrada's also got um, some panniers on, but that's only got like socks and pants and shoes in it. This has got the tripods, the cameras. So this is really lugging, so in the twisties, in these sorts of roads, you know, you're gonna be, it's gonna be slightly a disadvantage, but let's see how she does. You can feel it wallowing a little bit at the back with that luggage. Brakes still feel nice though, loads of punch on the brakes. A bit of a different position on the GS actually, it's uh, you're a bit more forward, you're a little bit more cantered forward. I actually feel a little bit higher as well. I think the seat is in the higher position, Chris said. It's a softer bike. It's definitely softer than the Multistrada and the uh, Super Adventure for sure. The suspension's softer. Even though it's in dynamic mode, dy dynamic pro mode, you've got a bit, there's not as much feel from the tarmac. It's not, you've not got quite that sensation that you're connected to the, 
the road as much as you are on those on those other bikes. Well, certainly the the multi and the super venture anyway. I need to try to triumph again, and you're sort of bouncing around. But that could be due to the weight. But <laughs> it changes direction so well. The GS. It's always an amazing thing to ride because of the way it changes direction, and it changes direction as well as the the multi and the super adventure because it's got that boxer engine and all the weight is right down here so it's low center of gravity look at these roads are absolutely incredible it doesn't transition quite as fast between left to right it's a bit slower when you get into the middle maybe we have just filled all the bikes up with fuel as well so this will be sporting its 30 liters absolutely nothing wrong with it through the twisty stuff even with all that luggage on I think it's definitely the BMW and the Triumph for the most comfortable. Certainly for some of my size anyway. Six foot two, 20 stone. Fatty basically. I mean I'm the target audience for these bikes. 50 years old, bald, fat. Hello? Hello? It's got good punch the engine but it doesn't carry the top end revs or some of the other bikes. I mean it red lines at nine. I think it's ten for the Super Adventure and the the multi stood up on the GS it's very thin in the middle and I think that's why it makes such a good sort of off-road bike as well no it's, it's a capable off-road machine isn't it the GS everyone knows it and it's nice and thin between your legs you know as far as adventure bikes go or even bikes sold in the UK Europe it's the top seller you can see why because it cosets you you know, it eats miles, it just eats up the road with ease. I mean, it's not the most sporty out of all of these, but it's sporty enough. When you want to push it on, it can do it because of that low centre of gravity. But it's just, it just, it's just so comfortable and, and so easy. The seat is big, thick comfortable I mean I was getting a sore ass on the super adventure and the, the multi it's recovering on here I could sit in this seat all day I'm sure I could the suspension is a bit bouncy and it feels like it's on a set of springs but you know if I want to do miles I don't want to have all of that information coming all of the time about the road surface and it is very comfortable the suspension on this I mean I know I'm in the sporty mode the dynamic pro I'm not getting the same levels of feedback as I am on the more sporty adventure bike so I need to try the Triumph now just to see how it compares to this GS final little walk around the GS yeah, it's a GS, isn't it? We've all seen one before. The suspension is in the fully sporty mode now, and it sits in between, I'd say, the GS and the Super Adventure and the Multi. It doesn't give you quite as much feedback as you get on the Ducati and the KTM, but it gives you more than what you get on the BMW. So back on the Multistrada, it's quite interesting just swapping between them like that. It feels very low, this bike. The seat height is really low on this. Definitely the lowest bike of the test, this one. I don't think I've ever ridden an uh, adventure bike where you get that feedback from the tarmac quite like you do on this. Like a power! I said yesterday that it's a little bit heavy to change direction. Now I've compared it with the others, yeah, it's not as quick to steer as the Multistrada. But it's, for, for a bike with 30 litres of fuel on board, which it has got, it's got almost a full tank, and where that weight's quite high, it ain't half bad. Look at this, absolutely beautiful. The sun's even come out. Wales is... Incredible. Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth. Lovely actually. Really rather nice. I didn't realise it went down this way as well. I thought it was just all this side. But we've got Hogwarts over there. Hogwarts of course. Good night last night. Went out. Had a bit of food. Oh, excuse the bird shit by the way. Got to clean that off. 
Um, bit of food last night, bit of, bit of snooker, bit of snooker as well. Got absolutely thrashed, me and Boothie teamed up against Chris and Al, and uh, we got our asses handed to us. I th I'm a terrible snooker player, and one of my contact lenses fell out, so I only had one contact lens in, so I was like squinting, trying to line the shots up. I don't know what Boothie's excuse was. I mean, I thought I was bad at snooker, or pool, or whatever, but Boothie, Jesus, <laughs> he was rubbish. At least I did actually pot some. I don't think Booby. I don't actually think Boothie potted anything. Did he? I, I don't think he actually potted a ball. So far, this test has really just been about which one's the fastest, which one handles better, because that's really the, the sort of roads we've had to ride on, you know. And what I've sort of obviously that adventure bikes are not all about that, you know. This, this isn't a sports bike test, and not everyone wants to know which is the fastest, which handles better. You know, there's other things to adventure bikes. So the Tiger, I think, for me, is a really good balance between all, all. It has good characteristics from all of the other bikes. It is as fast as the V4 Ducati, and I think the Super Adventure. I think this engine, it puts out the same amount of power, it feels quick, it's a very responsive engine, so I think performance point of view, we'll let's look at the handling in a minute, but I think it's on par with the others. The GS is down a bit on performance, but that Boxer engine, the way it makes its power, it sort of almost makes up for it because it's so chalky, so, so immediate power delivery, which this is as well. But there's other things to adventure bikes, you know, this is more comfortable than the uh, Multistrada or the Super Adventure, the KTM. This is, I don't, I, this could be as comfortable as the GS. I don't think it's quite as comfortable as the GS, but it's, it's sort of Hogwarts again. It's very, very close. There's not, there's not a great deal in it. From the tech perspective, they've, they're all loaded with tech, all of them. The G, on the tech front, the GS is actually lagging slightly because you know, as we know, there's a new GS coming um, probably next year. And that's the new one's going to have the adaptive cruise control, the blind spot detection. It's already on the RT, isn't it? it so, you know, it, it, BMW have it developed. So that's definitely coming next year. So on the tech front, yeah, it's lagging a few things. The electronic suspension is very good on the GS though, but it's not as... It doesn't go as sporty as it does on the V4 and the Super Adventure. So again, it comes down to what sort of riding do you want to do on your adventure bike? Because if it is just touring and you're not worried too much about you know, pushing the bikes to the limit, then you know, the suspension on the GS is lovely. And the suspension on the GS does, it is a nicer ride. You know, it's a more comfortable ride than those other two bikes. Even when they're in comfort mode, they don't go as comfortable as the GS. So. It really comes down to what sort of riding you, you... Last night we were sat about talking about, you know, if we had to ride one of the bikes to Auschwitz tonight, which one would it be? <laughs> I don't know why it was Auschwitz, but there we go. And I said, if I had to go all that way, I'd probably take the Triumph for the BMW, because I'd want the comfort. Whereas if, if the question was, you want to go out for Sunday morning to get a breakfast, just for a couple of hours ride, then I'd probably take the V4 or the Super Adventure. So that's it, all down to the sort of riding you're doing. If you're going to be racking up miles on your adventure bike, and you know, and really if you're buying an adventure bike, it should be because you do a lot of miles. That's for me, that's what adventure bikes are for, doing a lot of miles in comfort. So if you're doing a lot of miles, I think I'd take the G I think I'd take the GS or the Tiger. One of the two. As I say, I think the Tiger is takes a lot of the best bits from those other bikes. It's got the performance of the of the Multistrada. It's got, I think, the agility of the Super Adventure. We'll, we'll see that. And maybe not quite, maybe just not not quite, but you know, it's, it's almost there. So it's, it's like the best of three. And it's got the comfort and the, the, the road eating ability of the GS. So as an all-rounder, I think perhaps it is the ultimate all-rounder. Perhaps the ultimate all-rounder out of the four bikes. It's of course also got the shaft drive, so you've got that maintenance-free aspect to it when you go out on your journey. So if you, again, you're doing a lot of miles, you haven't got to worry about taking chain lube and maintaining your chain. Yeah, if you're running the bike through the winter, you haven't got to worry about the chain just rusting and dissolving on you. So 
you know, the GS and I think the Tiger are the ones, or the bikes to have if you want to munch serious miles. So that's it, that is really my summary. You know, there is no winner here. All these bikes are fantastic at what they do and they just, they're aimed at different markets, they're aimed at different people. So it depends what sort of person you are and what you want to do with the bike to which one you, you would want. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review. I've been, it's been fantastic to go away with the 44 Teeth Boys. You know, I am a massive fanboy, so, you know, and I've been on camera a few times with them and it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm sort of, oh, I don't know what to say. This is a 44 Tooth video. So yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit like that. So, you know, I, I love these guys. I think what their channel's fantastic. So if you, if you don't, I mean, I presume everyone knows 44 Teeth, so check out their version of this video. And uh, Chopsy may make a little bit of a, a cameo appearance in it. But uh, it's been great to be here. It's been great to have this opportunity to test these bikes back to back like this. Because setting up this type of shoe, people don't realise that, you know, the planning, the, the effort that goes in in the background to arrange all the bikes, to pick up all the bikes, the hotels, you know, the cost, the fuel. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big old expense and uh, it's really appreciated to be able to tag along and have everything laid out and provided for me so massive thanks for Al for the invitation that's alongside the road Lucy and uh, appreciate it thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video Cheers. we are at the three cocks I don't even see that on that pub over there the three cocks they're about to do their uh, final sum up the bikes while well, we enjoy a sneaky lager shandy. <laughs>